Hey guys, this is Matt Core from ControlPaint.com, and today we're going to talk about color correcting your images, but from the standpoint of many layered documents. Because all the examples I've given so far are this image, and it is pretty flat. I'm really only adjusting it after the image has been completed. Well, what if you want to move stuff around and still get to benefit from these adjustment layers? No problem. So here we can see a very wild gradient map. This is the original, and here it is with the gradient map applied. Well, this is the same idea. Here's the original, and then here's that same gradient map applied. So you can see grayscale is being replaced with these cool colors. But these are each individual layers, which means I can take any of these objects and just move them around. So the first thing to note is that I have created a group called top row, which is all these top ones, and then bottom row, which is all the bottom ones. So gradient maps will apply to everything below them in the layer stack. As in, if I were to drag this down below top row, but above bottom row, you can see the top squares here are still grayscale because they're not being affected. The bottom row are being affected, and it's all because of the physical layer order. You'll also notice that the background, which is a gray layer, is being affected because it too is below the gradient map. But what if I only want to affect the top row items? So I know my adjustment layer needs to be above the top row, but I don't want it to affect the bottom row. And I don't want to have to move the bottom row up in the layer stack. Well, here's where clipping mask comes in handy. So if I were to make this adjustment layer into a clipping mask, and it's sitting directly above this layer group, what happens is this adjustment layer is applied to each of the layers inside of the group called top row. I've color coded them all blue so you can tell that they're all together. But what this means is I can move any of these individual items wherever I want because it's still in this one group called top row. You can see I can move them all together and the gradient map follows along. It applies that color change only to the items in this group. So just to show you exactly how that works, I can unlink it from that group, move it above bottom row, Note that it's exactly above bottom row. There's no layers in between. And then I make it a gradient map. And so now these bottom row ones are colorized. The background is not colorized. See, I'll hide it again so you can see the difference. Here we have a gray background. Here the background stays gray. If I were to unlink this, it would also affect the background. So this is incredibly powerful. Just by placing an adjustment layer right above a group, and then calling it a clipping mask, I have all the flexibility I want of moving items around or maybe changing their size or whatever I want to do with them. These could be character thumbnails. It could really be whatever you want. But they're all receiving whatever neat color correction change I'm doing. It doesn't have to be a gradient map. It could be any of the adjustment layers. Like say you had a flock of birds and you had a whole bunch of other layers in the image but you just wanted to change all the birds simultaneously but you also still wanted to be able to move the birds around this would be a perfect opportunity each of the birds could be like one of these squares in a group and then you could apply some sort of color correction to the group as a whole without losing the ability to move them around and change them and it's really not just adjustment layers i mean look at this i can take this photo dropping it on top of the image. And let's say I want to use this as like a textural overlay. So I'll set the layer type to be overlay, but I only want it to be on this top row of squares. Well, I can just move it on top, turn it into a clipping mask, and here you can see it works just like those adjustment layers. So I can move the individual elements around, and as long as they're underneath that image, it just sort of follows them, and I don't have to make a mask manually. So I can change their size, I can do whatever I want, and this image texture, which I've set to overlay, just kind of follows them around. So I can manipulate it on its own, or I can manipulate these components on their own. And it's this clipping mask that links the two together. So once again, I know this is a sort of a more advanced, a little bit more of an abstract notion, but this is extremely powerful. So if you're using adjustment layers and you're using layer groups, just try adding them together. You get some really cool results. Thanks for coming to the site, guys.